Ah, uh, good vach. How's everybody doing? Shavua Tov. Do we have an update? Ellie, do you have an update from Avi? Anything? Why do you ask Avi? He's on. Avi's on? I, I texted him. Avi, what's the matzav? Where are you? Good word, bad word, what's going on? Okay. Beautiful. Today's share is being sponsored. Lurfuas, Rezo Gittel Bas Esther, our very good friend of the DAF, Dr. Epstein's wife. She's going through treatment and she got a bug. And uh, she's in crit- she is in critical condition. She was on life support, etc. So, raise the Gittel Bas Esther. Today's share is also being sponsored by my brother in law. You guys don't know this, but my mother was Nifter at the very young age of 49. And my father remarried a long, long time ago. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, 13, 15 years ago. So I, have a, I do have two stepbrothers. And one of them is Ari, and he had a, a daughter, and he watches the shear, apparently. I, know, I knew he was watching the shear through brachas and everything. So I didn't know all the way through now. I'm very proud of him. So sponsored by Ari and Adi Krishner in honor of the birth of our daughter, Rivka Alexandra. And Rufua Shlema, anonymously, for Anna Eliza Bat Tali. I still, there's somebody that's not muted. I wonder if it's Gary, but oh, whatever. I hear some feedback. All right, we'll just read a couple of emails here. Not in any order. I didn't like go through this well. Asher Amer. Hi, I want to express my gratitude to Hashem and you, to tell you that I appreciate the 8-minute daf and the full share every day. It's Mamish Agan Eden in this world. Thank you very much, and I wish you lots of atzlacha, Usher. Avi, Avi, your thing is still on. Yeah, that's what's going on. All right. Here's a very interesting one from a kid in the five towns. Dear Rabbi Eli, from Cedarhurst, my father listens to your daf Yoimi every day. I don't. First off, I want to say Mazel Tov to you and everyone else for finishing Mesech the Shabbos. So I guess the kid hears the, the buzz about the Siyam. But here's what's interesting. If you remember me, I emailed you about three months ago about that time and I called you a cool rabbi because you have a dog. <laughs> Thanks to you, we convinced my father to get a dog and a chicken. <laughs> this is a Gavalic email. So they got a dog and a chicken. Thanks to me. I, I, I feel really bad. I hope it's not because of me because I try to convince people out of it. A few people try to get it, and like the rabbis and the, 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 the rabbanim tell them to get it. It's good for your kid. It's terrible, terrible. You're going to end up walking the thing, and it, and it makes noise, and it and wants to eat your chal. While my father's learning the Gemara of Shabbos, he teaches us lots of Hilcha Shabbos. For instance, when our chicken lays eggs on Shabbos, you can't, I don't know if to believe this kid or not. I have to believe the chicken lays eggs on Shabbos, you can't touch it. We can't brush the dog on Shabbos. And a lot of our Allah is related to animals. We learned that we can't, we can't almost touch all the scraps off the table. The Shabbos meal because the chicken literally eats everything, including eggshells and more. Yeah, we learned that too. Thanks for our dog, and thanks for being cool. <laughs> I, my wife is laughing in the kitchen. I hear her laughing in the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> she knows I'm not cool. That's why she's laughing. So is, Ra- so is Rachel. So is Rachel. She's laughing. <laughs> she is? Uh, Rachel, better times. You should hear Psurus Taivas. All right. By the way, we said, we said, I just want to tell you that we said to him, I don't remember ever saying to him on Shabbos. We said to him in our Minyanim for Fuas Reza, um, Reza Gittel Bas Esther. Yeah. Fine. And then we have this one, another guy from the five towns. Forget the newsletters. I want memorabilia. Eight minute daf, Rebelli baseball caps, t shirts, stickers, wall art, etc. Something similar to thank you, Hashem merchandise. Great fundraising thing, and your fans would love it. Special section for autograph stuff from you and even Reb Yosef and other staff. Jo- Yosef, you're becoming famous. Best, Kalman. And one more from Ruben Turk. Dear Ellie, I've been, watch- I've been watching your, daf- your daily daf Yemishi on YouTube. 
for the past four months since the coronavirus has kept us at home pretty much full time. Your enthusiasm and motivation is constant inspiration to me and to all your regular followers that follow the Daf on a regular basis. We made Aliyah 18 months ago, Mazel Tov, and are now living in Yerushalayim, looking forward to upcoming Siyam on Masech Shabbos and joining you and your many followers for an exciting event. If you need any pictures, virtually or otherwise, please let me know. I know who this guy is. This is Ruben Turk. He took, I remember him taking pictures in Chicago at one of, like, a bris of hours, and I don't know, he always had a camera. Avi, you know this guy. He's, he's uh, one of the Turks. Yeah, it's Moshe and Fani Turk, father. Father, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and Moshe Turk is the guy that does the High Lifeline uh, race, right? The, the, the bike yeah. thing? Yeah, okay. So they, I didn't know they made Aliyah. Keep up the great work and send best regards to your in-laws in Chicago. With much appreciation and wishes for continuing at Slacha, Ruvain Turk, Yerushalayim. Okay, the rest will say. We have a bunch more here. All right, Raboy Sai, uh, any updates for... Well, tomorrow we're going to come out. We have the list. We almost have a full list. We are about 75 locations. Unreal. Uh, if somebody doesn't want their phone number, I'm not so comfortable about the phone numbers going out there, but what other way do we have to contact the host? We have emails and phone numbers. If you don't want your phone number in there, let us know. We'll take it off. Uh, first, we'll try it out on the WhatsApp groups, and then we'll put it, we'll publish it on other places so people can go online on the website and grab your phone numbers and scam you and all that other stuff. All right. Zokdei Legimar holding daf kuf mem on base on the bottom. Today's daf kuf mem aleph. Vinoitlem milfnei behema. So the Mishnah says, basically, here's the picture that I didn't show you on Friday. Uh, this is, I just did it on Shabbos. You could take from this animal right here, the donkey, and bring the food over to the ox, to the, to the cow. It's a one direction thing. You could go from donkey to, to, to para, but not reverse. So let's see inside how this works. You could take, you could take from an animal that has a good mouth, and the Gemara is going to explain, and you can take it, the food, in one direction. So if you have two, let's say, cows, you can go from cow to cow, that's not a problem. But what if you have two different types of animals? You have a donkey and you have a cow. So you can only go in one direction. You can take the food from the one that has a good mouth, and I'm telling you the end of the sugya, it means a donkey, has a good mouth, and you bring it over to the one that has a bad mouth, to the cow. But it says a different bride, you take from the donkey, and now we're calling it Piora. It has a bad mouth. And the cow all of a sudden has a good mouth. Both of them are the same direction. We're going from donkey to cow. That's it. Now, the only thing we need to explain is why do we call it one time, we call this one a good mouth and the other one a bad mouth, and that sometimes the opposite. You don't go from the ox to the donkey. So a donkey doesn't drool. So it has a good mouth. And then you can take the, the hay that doesn't have any drool on it, and it's, so it's not mukta, it's good stuff, it's valuable, and you bring it over to the animal that has a bad mouth. Hold on a second, before we go any weiter, ooh, all the way on top, I see my good friend Rabbi Socher Bram. So Shalom Aleichem Yisachar, he's a big part of this year. I haven't seen him in a while, but it's great to see you. Yishkoyach. It's a big chizik for everybody to see you here. Who else? I see my twin, I always see my twin when I look in the mirror. Yosef Ehrman. Mendi Bachazan. It's probably as tiny as that we started three and a half minutes late tonight. Okay. Let's go weiter. Cows, they drool a lot. So you're not going to go and take food from a cow. He just drooled all over it and gross out the polite donkey. He doesn't want to eat that stuff. So then why all of a sudden does it say in the other bride that the donkey's mouth is bad? doesn't mean it's bad. A donkey could eat anything besides, obviously, drooled upon food. But he does eat a lot of thorns and rocks and stuff like that. So bottom line is that we go from a donkey to a cow. Why you call this one a good mouth and a bad mouth and sometimes you reverse it, it depends on how you want to look at it. 
it doesn't drool, a donkey doesn't drool, but he does eat everything. Besides, drooled upon food. That, no. He has to set his standards. Rocks and thorns, yes. Not drool. Drool he doesn't do. Says the, says the Mishnah. Kufim and Aleph, Amid Aleph by the Mishnah. Hakash shal gabi hamito. In those days, they didn't have fancy mattresses. They slept on hay. So now, typically hay is mukta because hay is fuel for the fire, so it's mukta. So if you find yourself with a bunch of hay on your bed, and it's uncomfortable to, to sleep on, you can't smooth it out with your hand because the hay is mukta. What is this called when you do it with your body? So Rashi says this is called tiltu minatzad. Like, like moving it with your elbow. So the rush says, no, it's even better than that. This is called tiltu begufoi. Rashi says, you do it with your, with your shoulder, begtefoi. But he calls it tiltu minatzad, it says the rush, when you're doing it with your body, with your back, and with your shoulder, that's much better than doing it with your elbow. That's tiltu begufoi. That's already a better madrega than minatzad. But if this hay was designated and set aside, to feed your animals, just, just for the fun of it, why not? Bunch of pictures. So here's a guy on a bed full of hay. So you gotta move it with your shoulder. But if the bed already has a pillow, so that shows me that everything is designated for sleeping. So it's no longer hay that's mukta, it's hay that's not mukta. So I can already move it with your hand. Just like any, any sheet or any blanket that's not mukta. Why is this hay any different? Oh, this picture is an art scroll, but there's nothing like yoni. This one is gewaldic. You know, I'm starting to think that these large papers are not good for what we're doing here with the Zoom. These are good for the shear room, not good for Zoom. And I'm running out of paper anyway, so we might have to switch. You have here... Two heavy pieces of wood. At least the top one is very heavy. If you look closely, you have poles. They go up and down on these poles. And right in here, there's little notches that you could put little pieces in the notch. Here's a blow up. The notch goes in the hole to hold the two planks of wood together. Basically, you're pressing the clothing. The old-fashioned press without any steam. But there's two types. There's the, the type that you buy in the store, everybody has one at home. And then you have the dry cleaner one, you have the professional one. So this is a typical one. Matirin, I could undo it on Shabbos, I could pull the plugs out, so I could lift up the, the plank of wood, whatever it is. Metal, wood, maybe, maybe the, the balabatim have wood and then the dry cleaner they have metal, who knows. Matirin, so I could undo it and pull my clothes out, but I can't set it to, to, to press my clothes. But the professional one is also to touch on Shabbos because it's professional, because it actually makes creases and it, and it does the right thing. That's already, says Rashi, that's for after Shabbos. So it's already mukta, because to press... It does, it obviously takes, a, I don't know how much time, but more than that could be ready for Shabbos. So that's already for something for the weekday. Now you're preparing for the weekday, Aser. Oh, Says Rabbi Huda, if it was somewhat um, taken apart, it wasn't, it wasn't held together from, from Friday, then you could lift it up and pull your stuff out. Omer of Nachman, Hai Pugla, we're familiar with this. We already had this sugyo. We'll do it again. Here's a radish. Depending on how you put the radish, now the radish is detached. It's not attached. You're trying to, to store it. So if you store it right side up, where it's pointing down, the point of it is downwards. So if I remove it from the ground, I'm not disturbing the dirt at all. I could plunk it right out of the ground and everything's great. But this one right over here, if I take this guy out of the ground, I'm going to disturb the ground. 
So says Rav Nachman, Hai puglo milamalo lamata shori. If it's right side up, you're allowed to move it on Shabbos. Milamato lemalo osur, but if it's upside down, it's osur. So what do you see? He holds the chayra tiltul minat sad is osur. I'm not touching the dirt. I'm touching my radish. My radish pulls the dirt. Still, he says it's osur. So our Mishnah is not like Rav Nachman. Why? Because it says, Akash al Gabi Amito, if you have straw on the bed, you shouldn't move it with your head. You let it move it with your body. Now, your body and your body is moving cash, which is mukta. And over here you are touching a radish that's not mukta, but you're moving the dirt, which is mukta. So basically, our mission doesn't go like Rav Nachman. If this straw is food for animals, or you showed already that you want to use this as a bed, you have a nice pillow, or even a sheet, you're allowed to use your hand. So you see that it's not a problem to move mukta when you do it not with your hand. Not like Rav Nachman, who says that Tiltum and Atzad is Asr, you got to be careful while you pluck this out. This would be Asr, even though you're not touching the dirt over here. You're just grabbing it by the top and pulling it out, but you're moving the dirt. Moving the dirt, Minatzad, according to Rav Nachman, is Asr. So now that we just spoke about Tiltum and Atzad and moving things with a Shinui, so the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Yudah, Hane Pilpile, these peppers, Medak Chado Chado. I want to dice it up. I want to do like toichen. I want to grind it down nice and thin. So I can't do it with a knife. I have to use the handle of the knife. What is that called? That's called shinui. So I'm the shinui crushing it. Shari. Tarti. Asr. So he sticks in one other thing here. I could only do so if I'm using if I'm doing it to one pepper. That's that's different. In the weekday, nobody does one pepper. So two peppers is osir, one pepper is mutter. Danny Sack, Shom Aleichem. I only see the first screen. So whoever's new on the first screen, you better be careful, I'm gonna call you out. Shom Aleichem, nice to meet you. How you doing? Uh Rava Omar, Kivin the Mishane, Afilu Tuvenami. So very interesting. It doesn't say exactly what he's changing here. But Rabbah says, since I'm changing, so you would think, reading the Gemara, what does it say? What's the change? What did you do different? You took a knife and you flipped it over. You're using the handle of the knife. Says Rashi, no, there's more than that. There's two changes here. Two shinuyim. And that is, that you're not doing it in your typical mortar bowl. You're doing it in a plate. So you have two things. What are you doing it in? You're doing it in a plate. And number two, how are you doing it? With what vessel are you doing it? With what clear are you doing it? Oh, if you're doing it with the handle versus the actual knife, then it's okay. Says Rava, since I'm doing two shinuyim, I don't care how many peppers you have. You can do two, three, five. That doesn't matter. I already have two shinuyim. It's okay. Omer Avi Hudo. So the bottom line is, lahalacha. that's what we're passing, that you need two shinuyim. Okay. And la'alacha and also, just one thing, one last thing. You're not allowed to do dak-dak. Meaning, if you're going to do it, if you're going to crush something, I don't know, you're going to make, let's say, tuna fish or whatever, don't go, or egg salad is a good example, you don't do dak-dak. You don't do very fine, very thin egg salad. That's why a lot of times the people that do the egg salad shop is you'll see larger pieces. So tushinuim, you do it with the back of the fork, not the front of the fork, let's say. And instead of... I don't know what the shinu of the kli, because we don't use mortar and, and, and uh, the pestle anymore. But let's say you do it in a nice bowl, you do it in a, in a plate. Whatever, that kind of shinu. I'm not passing I'm just saying how, how I read it. You guys ask your rabbi. Omar Rabbi Yehuda, man de soche b'mayo. You're allowed to, technically, you're allowed to swim in water. We don't do it. It, they say, it says not to. We're machmer today not to. So he's swimming in water on Shabbos. 
Very interesting halacha. I don't know if anybody would think about the problem. We're not talking about schit here. We're talking about another problem. What could be a problem with swimming in water? Nothing to do with ridding yourself of the water with schit or with a towel. The problem is carrying. Carrying water on your body. You hear this? Because you are in some body of water, and this body of water is considered a caramelous, and you're going to come out of the water and walk on the shore, on the bank of the river, which is also considered a caramelous, and that's a problem. You can't walk with all this water. You have three pounds of water on you, that's a problem. So, first, Use a towel. Now, how do you have a towel? You have the towel. You bring it all the way to the shore. And you bring it in. You're not carrying it four hours. You're, you come out of the water, most of your body. You dry yourself off. And then you come out. So for us, this halach is not very important because most of us don't, don't swim on Shabbos. That's the problem. You might walk four hours. Va'asir. Forgot the joke. There's like a mama joke about this. I heard my kids saying it the other day. Forget it. Not for now. Like something about a mama jumping into the pool and there's no, I don't know. Oh, yeah, the pool scream out like Moses, something, like you're splitting the sea. But if a person jumps into the water and, and all the water starts moving, it, it's going to move four amas. It's, you're going to see a ripple effect four amas away. Why aren't you move, Why isn't that not considered, considered moving your water in the Carmelis, because the pool, the, 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 the river is a Carmelis, you just move the four hours. Says the Gemara, Koychoy be Carmelis like Gazru. We don't talk about Carmelis and Koychoy. Koychoy means your force. You didn't take it, carry it four hours. You went in, you pushed it, and then it had a ripple effect. It eventually ended up four hours away. That's Koychoy. When it comes to Carmelis, we're not concerned about Koychoy. Now, the Mishnah Brura brings very interesting halachas that are neged to us. What about somebody that walks in the rain? You walk in the rain, you're carrying all this water on you. Why is that not a problem? Especially in, in Chutz Laaretz. You're walking in America somewhere, no area of nothing, you're walking with all the rain. So first they say, you don't have that amount of water on you. I'm not exactly sure what that means. It's, not, it's different than coming out of a pool, I guess. Coming out of a real body of water, you have that much more. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm asking, what is the difference if you're in the rain? When you get soaked, you have even more, because this goes into your clothing, you know? Versus when you're in your bathing suit coming out of a pool. Seems like when you come out of a, of a river, you have more water than if you're soaked from the rain. That's what I'm asking. I know that you need a shear, but why? Why is that, why is that less of a shear when you walk? Now, the Mogan of Ram, I think it is... Yeah, I'm asking, I don't understand. I don't understand the Matthias. If you understand it better, let me know. But, okay, that is the Matthias. That's what he says. That's, I think, the Taz. I forgot already who says. But another thing that they say is that, I think the Mogan Avram, the Mishnah Buddha brings this all down. He says that you cannot tell people not to walk because maybe it's going to rain. And if it rains, so, so let's say it rains. You didn't realize it's going to rain. You're walking in the street and all of a sudden it rains on you. What are you supposed to do? St- stand still and not walk for the rest of the Shabbos? So obviously, in that case, Chacham weren't geyser. Oh, once Chacham weren't geyser, there's no gzeira lechatzayim. There's no half gzeira. So therefore, they said, if you're stuck, you didn't realize it's going to rain and rain on you, you're allowed to continue walking. So then you're allowed to walk out lechatchila into the rain. Okay. So you don't have to worry about this whole idea of carrying water anymore. That's not a, that's not a problem. Omar Abay. Yisem Rabbi Yudo. And we see this throughout, all over the place. This was a real concern for them. Because they didn't have pavement, they didn't have sidewalks. And if it rained, and you're going to walk outside, obviously you're going to get a bunch of mud on your shoes. So what do you do? You could scrape it off on the ground, but don't scrape it off on a wall. Why not? Because you're adding clay to a wall. So it looks like you're building. Says Gemara, <coughs> I think it's Belosh and Shiloh, some people say not, but like, who builds like that? Who builds with mud? This is a very rudimentary type of building. We build nicely with the Evin Yerushalmi or with lime, whatever it is, but not, not with uh, mud. 
That's not a problem. You're right. That's not bina. It's the reverse. The problem is scraping it off on the ground. Dilma gumais. Oh, you're gonna start scraping it off on the ground, and you're gonna forget that it's Shabbos, and you're gonna scrape it off right into a hole in the ground, and you're gonna purposely try to fill in the the hole. You see a nice hole. You, you like to play that game, make everything nice and straight, and you're going to fill it up, and you're not going to realize that it's Shabbos, you're going to forget. So therefore, we're going to tell you, don't scrape your feet on Shabbos on the ground. It's my marbury, the Rabbi Omar. Echot zev, echot zev, So my brother says, you're not to scrape on the floor, you're not to scrape on a wall. Even on a wall, it's awesome. Papa Omar, echot zev, echot zev, mutar. So, you're not to scrape on a wall, similar to Bayna. You're not to scrape on the floor, because mash v'gumais. My papa says, echadzev, echadzev, mutar. We're not concerned about <coughs> Ashri Gumois. It's Dovashem Miskavin. And in fact, that's the halacha, Rashi says, because we're passing like Rib Shimon, that Dovashem Miskavin, you didn't have intent, that wasn't your idea, and therefore it's mutar, and on the wall it's mutar. But according to the she that says it's asr, 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 what are you going to walk around with 10 pounds of mud on your feet? You have a special piece of wood, a nice, nice edge, scrape it off on the piece of wood. So we know what a is, and we're gearing up for Masech the but just in case. Here is the little courtyard, and this red guy right over here is your lechi. It's a piece of wood standing up, and it shows me, hey, from this point on is Rosh Hashanah, and be careful. And therefore, I'm allowed to carry in here. Says the Gemara, don't sit right over here where this arrow is. I didn't make that arrow for here. It's from a different sugya. But don't sit right there. Why? Dilma migandre lechefetz. Something will fall out of your hands. You'll be playing with something. It will fall out of your hands. Vazil You'll come to, to grab it. Now, the rush says that this is only by a, by a mavoy, but by your own chatzar that has nice you know, doors to your yard, you're allowed to sit there right by your chatzar. If something falls out, you're not going to go get it because you, you're constantly reminded of the fact that you're in a private domain and that's the Rosh Hashanah and you're not going to go get it. By a mavoy, it's so open and so big and the Rosh Hashanah is right there in front of you and all you're relying on is this little lechi, you might come to forget. We're just going through halachas, different halachas, boom, boom, one after another. So, you have a barrel like this, and typically what people do is they go like this, back and forth, they roll it, until they get a nice solid ground for it. They want, to be, they want it to be on a flat surface. So, it's telling you don't go back and forth, don't, don't rock it. Why? Because that rocking motion is a shvui gumois. You're, you, you're, you're basically flattening out the dirt below it. And that's a shvoyi gumas. That's, that's a malach of bayna. Vamarava. Leilahedek inish udra bepuma deshisha. Don't take a rag that's moist and try to force it into the, the opening of a bottle or a can or something. You don't want it to be, you want to protect whatever you have in there from uh, what is it called? Um, Megula, my Megulam at night. Whatever, you don't want it to spoil. The issue is, since it's moist and you put it into the top, you're squeezing it. What's the problem with schita? What's the iser? If I'm an aide and I want to tell somebody, don't do that. If you do it, you're going to have to bring a carbon. Or you do that, you're going to get misa. What do I tell them? <coughs> schita, you don't say schita, you say melabin. So I'm, I'm making the, the cloth clean. Some say it's mefarek. I'm separating two things. Omer Avkano. <coughs> Simon, I need help. Omer Avkano. Tit shalgabe bigdoi. Mikaskisoi mebefnei ve mikaskisoi mebechutz. So here's the, just a little, I just want to bring this up, even though it's not really the sugi, we're going to have it soon, even in more detail. But let's say... It happens all the time. You go to shul and a kid tries to get into the seat and he hits you with his shoe and on your pants you have this nice little mark of dust. 
on Shabbos. Most of us are familiar with the idea that you're not allowed to clean it on Shabbos. What if you do? What are you over? Well, what's the big deal? A little dog, like your hat falls down on the floor, you have a black hat, some of us, and it gets a little dusty, and you take your, your sleeve and you, go, and you start going like this. You're not going to believe this. Maybe you will. According to Rashi, it's an Isser Dei Raisa. Isser Dei Raisa. And if you didn't know it's an Isser Dei Raisa, so when Mashiach comes, you have to bring a bunch of karbanis. Because it's a, it's a shaykh. You just didn't know that's this is the right. According to Rashi, to take off dust off your pants, off your clothing on Shabbos, this is the right. Raisa. So let's see the sugya. Tejagabi big dog. We have mud, not dust. You're allowed to scrape it off from the other side of your garment. Let's say in here, but not from the outside. Now, how does this fit in with what we just said? The Rashi says this is the Arizal. Because when you have a bunch of mud, you're never going to get down to the surface of your clothing. You're still going to have a mark. Rashi is talking about dust, that you go like this, you flick it off, and it's nice and clean. That's Milabin, that's this is the Arizal. According to Rashi. But over here, you have a bunch of mud. So instead of scraping it off deliberately from here, you go from the other side of the clothing. Mesve, I have a question. If you have a bunch of mud on your shoe, Megaroi Begav Sakin? Oh, I could scrape it off with the flat part of a knife, not, not the sharp part. Vishal Bigdoi, and if you have some, some mud on your beged, Megaroi Bitsiparin, you could scrape it off with your nail. Ubeva, actually, Kaskis, you shouldn't. Shouldn't rub it too strongly. You shouldn't go back and forth. My love, shalei kaskis klal. You shouldn't do it at all. La shalei kaskis mibachut elo mibifnim. So the Gemara says, no raya from here, no question. We're going to stick with what we said. You're allowed to rub it from the underside of the garment, but not directly from the top. Now, just as a also halacha l'maisa, a lot of times you go, you have snow on the bottom of your shoe. You have mud on the bottom of your shoe. So the halacha is, if it's a very sharp blade, it's usher to take it off. Why? Because you might peel off a piece of leather. I'm not talking about rubber shoes, and I'm not passing any halacha. Leather shoe, by you taking off a small sliver of your leather, that's an iser of memachik. That's the problem here, memachik. So, now, what if it's very wide? The piece of metal, like they have these, these grates, you know, especially in, in America, you have a grate, you put your shoe on, you go. So, the Magan Avram says, you really shouldn't. But at the end, the Mishabur says that we're not so machmir on it if you do it lightly. If you do it nice and light without going crazy. And especially, he says, if it's uh, still moist. If it's very hard, it's different. But he says, we don't have to be so machmir when you do it slowly. And when it's moist. If you can remember that, great. All right, fine. Says the Gemara. Omer Abba, Omer Blazer, Omer Bianai. Migare minel chadosh avalayashan. You could scrape off a new shoe, but not an older shoe. Again, because of the iser of memachik. Older shoes, some of it will come. We're turning to that kufmem aleph on the base. Bememigaroi. You use the flat part of the knife, not the sharp, the, the, the thicker side. And typically when it says, it means, you should get rid of your halacha and bring in this halacha instead. The Tanar Rebbechia. Ein megardin, ein megarim lo yimil chodz v'lo yimil yashem. You shouldn't scrape off even a, a new shoe. So anyways, it says, you, you were making a distinction between the old and new. No distinction. Both of them are also. Who else? Five-ish. Ooh. Five-ish. Okay. Reb Eib Newman I see here. David Asborn. Rabbi Langer. 
Okay. It's a nice oil tonight. Nice oil. I'm pushing 100. You hear this? 75 locations for Siumim. Unbelievable. Unreal. Tomorrow we're going to announce where they are and some interesting stuff about them. Zogdi Gemara. Velo Yosuch es ragli shemen vubitoy chaminol or bitoy chasandol. So, I don't even know how they did this in those days. To me, it seems gross, but they used to take, they were always busy with their oil. Pouring oil on this, pouring oil on that. So, you want to pour, you want to get some nice geschmack of oil all over your foot. And your feet are in your shoes. So this is a problem. Don't start pouring oil on your foot when it's in your shoe. Because this is called ma'abed. You're working, you're tanning the leather. And it happens to be that you're pouring a bunch of oil on your leather shoe. Yeah, you're trying to get it on your foot, but your foot is attached to your shoe. And by pouring the oil, you're getting your oil on your shoe. What you could do is, if your foot is out of the shoe, so you pour a bunch of oil on your foot, and then you just put your foot right in. A little bit gets on the shoe, Oh, this is gross. I don't know. You, you pour oil all over your body. You know, uh, they, they we're talking about the Ribbon the the other day. So he used to do Gilgulei Shelling. He used to literally roll, get into a bathing suit or something, and roll around in the snow. And I did it when I was in Denver a bunch of times when we were skiing. You come out of a hot uh, pool, you jump into the snow, you roll around. It is torture. It literally f- it feels like uh, needles in your skin all over your body. And then... You, then there's a nice hot pool, you jump back in the pool and it's all over. For that, just for the, for the shtick and to get a good video, you do it. Fine. People did it just to, to get Yisurim out of it, to get rid of the chet. This is called Gilgule Shemen. This Gilgule Sheleg. This Gilgule Shemen. What, what's Gilgule Shemen? Sach kol guve Shemen u misagal agave kotavulio vene choshesh. You smear a bunch of oil all over your body. Then you start rolling... You do a self-massage. You pretend you're in a massage place. You pour the oil on yourself. And then you go over some sort of tablecloth that, I don't know what. And you roll around and it feels gewaldic. To me, it sounds like a nightmare. Personally, I'd rather do gigulei shelig than gigulei shemen. You don't have to worry about it. So this is a Rav Chizda comes along and says, if you're trying, if you had kavana to polish your shoes, okay, great. But if you have kavana to tan your shoe, to work it up with some oil, that's aser. Uh, says the Gemara, labdoi pshita. Well, you can't tan a shoe on Shabbos. V'su what you're allowed to polish a shoe. We're not talking about our shoe polish with the with the with the brush and the and the black stuff. It's pouring some oil on it, getting it you know nice and shiny, whatever it is. Not tzivaya. I'm not talking about tzivaya. I'm talking about to shine it. You know what I mean? Does anybody say you're allowed to sh- polish, shine a shoe on Shabbos? Elo, you're right. Elo, yitma, hachi, yitma. This is what we have to say. Omer, avchizda, lo yishonu, elo. I'm just trying to see if there's a rub here. No rub. Okay. Omer, avchizda, lo yishonu, elo, shir le tzach tzachoy. Ava, shir le avdoim, osr. What he was trying to say is, how much oil do you have on your shoe? Just enough to, to polish your shoe. But if you had that much oil on you, that's enough to tan a shoe, then even if you don't have intent for tanning, it's also usher to put your foot into the shoe when you have that much oil. Uh, what's the gear so here? Okay. You're not allowed to go out. The kids are, you're not allowed to go out with a shoe that's too big on you. Why? And this I'm thinking now just out loud. This might be the same problem, let's say, with a slipper. The point is that this shoe could fall off your foot. I bet you they talk about it. I remember something about it. I don't know. Uh, forget that. But the idea is that anything that's on your foot that's too large, that could fall off, you might pick it up and carry it. If it's very, let's say you wear a very large uh, coat, whatever, it's too many sizes. That's okay. It's not going to fall off your body. And you're not going to take it off. A woman, not a man, a woman cannot go out with a torn shoe. Now women, they treat the shoes differently than men. We have one, two pairs, that's it. They, by them it's like a, 
a designer thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? Um, jewelry, whatever you want to call it. It's something special for them. So they have a, they have a different halacha when it comes to the shoe. So if it's torn, what's going to happen? She's going to go out and people are going to start laughing at her. They used to do it in those days also. You're thinking back then they were a little bit more, no. Midas was always an issue. Well, he's tackling his boy. So since people are going to make fun of her, She's going to take off her shoe. She's going to walk in with her shoe, surrounded with the shoe. She'd rather go barefoot or whatever she's wearing underneath her feet, under the shoe, than to, to wear a shoe that people make fun of her. Now, this shoe is not really a shoe because people don't wear such a shoe. People make fun of people that wear such shoes. So, therefore, she shouldn't use it for chalitza if she's a yavama. It's not a real shoe. It's a shoe, not a shoe. It's not a good shoe, but a bediyavid kind of shoe it is. And if that's what she did, then the chalitz is kosher, we're not going to pull her to Bezin again. Now, a person should not go out with a new shoe. We're talking about a woman. She's never worn the shoe before. Again, the concern is, she might have some experience with the shoe, and she'll realize very quickly that it's not perfect for her. Either they'll make fun of her, whatever it is. She's going to remove the shoe and walk in and just around with it. If she never tried it on before Shabbos. Once she knows already, yeah, it fits well, then she has no concern, it's not considered a new shoe. We learned somewhere, What's an imus? So Rashi says, pharma. In English, a form. What does it look like? If you ever went to a repair shop, a shoe repair shop, that... This guy right over here, this piece of metal. Okay, I don't know that it was made out of metal in those days. Maybe it was made out of leather, I don't know what. Wood. And you put your shoe on it like this, okay? Very simple. Now, what is this, halachically? This is a kli shemalach to lister. I'm forming a shoe on it. I knock a couple of nails from the top. Whatever I need to use this for, it's a kli shemalach to lister. Now, my shoe was on there before Shabbos. So it says, I'm allowed to remove the shoe. I'm allowed to use it on Shabbos. And other Bryce says, you're not allowed to remove the shoe. Oh. So it's going to see. This is not. says in the Mishnah, Minosh Gabayimos, brand new shoe. Brand new shoe. It's just like this. Look at this. Brand new. It even has the shoelaces in there. It's beautiful, brand new. It's, it's done, 100% done, but it's still on the form. It's big machlaikas. Rebbe Lezer, Mitar, Vechachamim Mitamim. Listen to this. Rebbe Lezer goes as far as saying that even though the shoe is 100% wearable, it's ready to be worn, it's still not a kli. Why? Because the shoemaker never removed it from the form. Now you don't have to be a, a, a big guy to know how to remove a shoe from a form. You just go like this and it comes off. But since he never did that, so it's not a kli. Until he, you need that makabapati, so to speak. You need that last final move. And he didn't do it. And if he doesn't do it, so it's not a kli. And if it's not a kli, then it's not makabal tumma. So therefore, if it's not a kli, then it's mukta. If it's mukta, I can't remove it from the form. That's why one Bryce says you can't remove it from a form, form on Shabbat. But if it is a kli, it's already a wearable shoe, then I could remove it. Says the Gemara, We're talking about the form now. The actual form, this is a kli, says Rava, so, when we're learning Hilchas Mokta, we went through this in this Masechta. What's a typical, your typical example? A hammer. A hammer I could use, meaning I want to break open a, a coconut. So I'm using the hammer for its purpose, for its design purpose. This is something else called the Tzarek I need the place where the hammer is on. It's on my Shabbos table. It's on my bed. My cell phone is on my bed. Move it or not move it. So Rava says, I can move a hammer for two reasons. Let's start to crack open a nut or because I need the place. 
that it's on top of. Shapir. So that's why I can move this form. Yes, I'm not talking about this shoe. This shoe, you're telling me, is not mukta because it's not, it's a kli already, it's finished, and every chacham knows how to take it off. Great. But what about the form? When I'm mo- taking the shoe, I'm moving this form, and the form is mukta. Now, think about it. The form is inside my shoe, and I need the place inside my shoe. It's sarich mekaymai. You have what's going on here? It's taking up the whole airspace of my shoe. I want to get rid of a klisha malach the from within my shoe. So according to Rava, it's great. If I want to break a coconut with this piece of metal, that's okay. But if I just needed space, it's awesome. What's a bai going to say? I'm not moving the form. Because the shoe is completely open. It's, the shoelaces aren't tied. It's completely open. And without even moving the form at all, even one millimeter, I'm able to slip the shoe off and I'm good. That's what this says. It's mutter if it's, if it's on loosely. Time of the rafu, Oh, says the Gemara, according to review, they have to say that it's on loosely. How's Rava going to explain himself? Rava says it's not a problem to move Mukta. So why does Rava say that he was on loosely? So then why does Rava say that it's loose? Why does Rabbi Yudu have to say a whole shtikot that it's loose? Rabbi Yudu should just say, you let to, to move the form, you let to do whatever you want because they need the room inside the shoe. Says the Gemara, I Rabbi Yehuda, Mishum Rabbi Lezu. What did Rabbi Lezu say a second ago? That the shoe is not a kli. It's not finished yet because the professional didn't decide it's a kli. He never took it off the form and never put it on the shelf to sell. So you have no business taking it off. It's not a kli. It's not a shoe yet. Oh, the sign Rabbi Doimer, Mishum Rabbi Lezu, Mahirafu Imotor. However, since it's so loose, even though it's not a kli then it's considered that it's off the form. You hear what's going on here? It's a nice svar. When is it considered on a form and I need a professional and I, I need the guy that made the shoe to decide, okay, I'm taking it off? If it's on tightly. But if it's on loosely, then it's not, halachically, it's not on the form. Just pretend it's not on there at all. It's as if it's on the ground because it's on loosely. Anything that's on loose is not on. It's not, they're not connected. And therefore, even in that case, Rebbe Lezer will agree that it's a complete shoe, that it's a kli, it's a mikabal tuma, etc. Hadron Allah, Toilin, Hadron Allah, Toilin, Hadron Allah, Toilin. Says the Mishnah, Noit Aladim is Binoiva, Evan Biyadai. Today during laning, I was thinking, it's like, I don't know if this is, you know, the Gain says that if you learn something that day, the parasha, today in our parasha by Shlishi, it says, Kasher Yiso Aves Binoi. I think that's the Lashon, something like that. Like a father carrying a child. Here. Noitel Adam is Binoi. It's not really. That's not what the guy was talking about. It's the same Lashon, maybe. Not the same Allah, not the same idea. Noitel Adam is Binoi, Vayavim Yadoi. A father is carrying his son, and the son is holding Mokta. Now he's carrying him in his own house, in the huts or whatever. In a place where you're allowed to carry a kid. But he's not allowed to carry. The stone, he has no business, a father has no business carrying stones in Shabbos. But he's not carrying a stone, he's carrying his son who's carrying a stone. Is that okay? Now, the son, pretend the son, let, let's say he's carrying a box and in the box is a stone. That's us, sir. So why is this different? He's carrying his son who's carrying a stone. He's like, they're both in his hand. He's, he's carrying the full weight. But you're allowed to do it. The Gemara is going to discuss and explain to us why. I'm allowed to carry a basket when it has a stone inside. Now, this is a big chiddush. I'm allowed to carry truma when I have some of the truma, some of the fruit, truma, food that only a coin could eat. Some of it is tar. Some of it, I don't know why I have a picture. Here's a picture. Because he only has a picture, we have a picture. Here's a father carrying his son. And the son is carrying a stone. Great. Here's another one. This might be more important to see. But here is the truma tmeya. 
Here's a mouse, dead mouse, on Truma. And it's up here. The Truma Tamea, as the Gemara is going to explain, we're not going to get to it today, is on top. And this stuff, the figs, are Truma Tahira. So you're carrying a basket with both. Now, the Truma Tamea, what do you do with Truma Tamea? You can't eat it. You have to burn it. But you can't burn it at Shabbos. So I have absolutely nothing to do with this Truma Tamea. So what is it? It's a bunch of stones. As far as I'm concerned, this food, Truma Tamea, is like a bunch of dirt to me. Nothing. It has zero value. It's Muksa Machmas Gufay. If I have a bunch of Truma Tamea and regular fruit, Chulin, or Truma, if I'm a Kayin and I have Tar, I can carry them both. Oh, a little interesting Allah here. Let's go this way. First you see Yoni has here. A hundred peiros in this one box. And he goes and throws in another pre depicted in red. So now what do you have? A hundred and one. hundred plus one is a hundred and one. Now why is that important? Because truma only becomes bottle, that red guy is truma. It falls into a hundred fruit that anybody, any Israel, any one of us could eat. Besides Rabbi Schoenberg, he could eat truma, whatever. But regular guys, Israel guys, could eat these guys, the, the regular fruit. Now, the truma falls in there, I don't know. Maybe only a kind could eat this box. But since there's a hundred, and your truma is one, so I have a hundred pieces against that one, now I could eat it if I remove one. I have to remove any one here, like Yoni shows here. This guy's a Kayan. Where is he? This guy's a Kayan because he has a nice Kayan hat. And this guy is just a regular Chassid. He's wearing a strimal. So the Chassid is giving the Kayan one red fruit. Which one? Any one. I just made it red so you... They're all red, okay? You don't, you don't know which one is what. But you don't want the Kayan to lose out from this whole transaction because he owns, somewhere in that box, he owns one fruit. Yes, it became bottle, but you don't want the Kayan to lose out. So you take one out of the box and you give it to him. Now, you would think that that's considered Mesakimana. I'm fixing all my fruit. I have a bunch of fruit here. I'm not allowed to eat it on Shabbos because one of them is Truma. And I'm telling you, go ahead, take one and give it to the coin. Now I can eat everything. Nevertheless, I'm allowed to do it on Shabbos. I'm allowed to take it up, lift it out. The meduma, this, this, this is stuff that I don't know what it is. I have 101. I'm allowed to take one fruit out. The father takes out a child. A live one, because soon we're going to talk about a dead one. A live kid. And on the kid is a, is a wallet. Chayev Meshum Kis. He's only Chayev for carrying a wallet. And he's not Chayev for bringing into Rosh Hashanah a child. And the Gemara is going to explain why. What if the baby is Rachman al not alive? The kiss Tali Lebetzavari. The kid was playing, his last thing he was doing, he's playing with this wallet, and he dies, and you take the dead baby out together with the wallet. Potter. He's not high for any of them, either of them. Says the Gemara, The first case, you're high because you're carrying a wallet. Why are you not high for carrying a baby? Says the Gemara, We had this already. There's the concept that a human being balances himself and by balancing himself he makes it easier easier to carry so it's not as if you're carrying the whole baby carrying a lot of it but not all of it and therefore you're not high for the baby himself ask the Gemara but at the end of the day why are you high for carrying the wallet the kiss the wallet ask the Gemara the the wallet should become bottled to the baby we learned this as well. We learned in the Mishnah, If you, on that Tzadik Gimel it says over, we learned it. A Mishnah. 
if you carry a human being on a bed, the bed becomes bottled to the human. Shamit et failo, you're not chayav on the bed. Says the Gemara, Amit the Gabi chayav mevatele. Yes, that's the way it is. I'm mevatele, I don't care about the, the bed, I care about the human. Kiss the Gabi tinoik, loy mevatele. But I don't make the, the wallet bottled to the baby. Now, let's go to the next halacha. Tinoik meiz, the kids told a little bit of if I have a dead child and he has this wallet wrapped around his neck, potter. Ask the Gemara of Elchayim Shem Tinoik. But what about the baby? Says the Gemara, Ravak Rib Shimon Svilei. The famous Rib Shimon, Domar, Kom Melacha Shein Tzrich Legufa, Potter Aleil. This is the classic example of Melacha Shein Tzrich Legufa. We have many different cases, but here it is. Here's the case. If you have a dead person in your house, you don't want the person, the dead body in the street, you just don't want a dead person in your house. You don't want, it's not a positive malacha, it's a, it's a negative. It's to, it's, you're trying, you're coming up with a solution to your problem. You have, a, you have a smelly body in your house, you don't want it in your house, you take it outside. But you don't want it outside, it doesn't do you any good that it's outside, you just don't want it in your house. You rather it not being here at all, you rather not having to deal with it. So Mamela, that's called Melacha She'ein Tzrich Legufa. It's a Melacha that you don't need inherently for the Melacha itself. And therefore your potter carrying it outside. According to Rabbi Shimon. And that's what we hold like. Tanan, Adam es benoiva evan But what are we going to do with this? That it says that you're allowed to carry, you're, you're allowed to carry a, bo- a kid. And he has a stone. And over here it says that the stone is not mukta. If I'm allowed to carry my kid and he's holding a stone, it's not as if I'm holding the mukta. The stone is not mukta for me. So if it's not mukta, so it's not carrying. Why over here is it carrying? Says the Gemara, We're talking about the reason why you're allowed to carry this kid with a stone. It's not because it's not mukta. Maybe it is mukta. We made a special kula when this kid is going crazy, he's throwing a tantrum, it's going to make him sick, not sick to the point that you have to bring him to the hospital, but sick enough, it's going to make him not well. So I said, okay, in that case, if he's holding a stone, I'm allowed to carry him. But the stone is mukta. It is considered carrying. We made a special kula in, the, in this case. So then why are we talking about a stone? Even money, cash. <coughs> You're not allowed to do the same thing. You're not allowed to carry a kid if he's holding a bunch of money. Says the Gemara. Now, there's a very important Rashi here. The Rashi says, well, we'll see in a second. Evan says the Gemara. If the stone falls out of the child's hand, the father doesn't care. He's happy. Get rid of it. Now, the Mishabur does bring down that if, you, if the kid throws a fit, you let to put him down on the ground, let the kid pick it up himself. You, you're not going to come to pick it up. Dinar, enough. If the, a bunch of money falls out of your kid's hand, you're going to come to grab it. Says Rashi, therefore, Says Rashi, if your kid is holding a bunch of money in his hand, so you're not going to walk around with him in the street. Forget about carrying him. Even walking with him, holding onto his hand, you're not allowed to. I guess not holding his hand, that would be okay. Tanya Gavah said the Rava. One small piece of Gemara and we're done. Tanya Gavah said the Rava. You're carrying a whole pile of laundry. Fold the laundry in your hand. Put it on your shoulder. Your rings, instead of them being on your finger, you're holding them in the palm of your hand. Your shoes in the palm of your that's regular carrying on Shabbos. We wanted to say this part. But if you, there are new, you hold a bunch of sweaters and t-shirts and rings on your fingers, potter, that's not a problem. Now, and if you carry a human being, you give a guy a ride on your shoulders, and he's wearing a bunch of clothing, I hope, and he's wearing his shoes, and he's wearing rings, potter. Because Chayno says Atzmoy, he's balancing himself, so it's not as if you're carrying the whole 250 pounds, it's only 
and therefore you are potter. But if this guy is completely naked, let's say, and he's holding all his clothes in his hand, then you are chayev. You see what's going on here? If you're carrying a person, and the person you're not carrying, why and everything that he has on him is bottled to him, so now you're potter. But if he's carrying it, then you're chayev. So too, when it comes to this child, same exact Allah. Alright, Rabbi Isai, tomorrow morning, Be'ez Hashem, 7.15, if you know anybody who wants to host, well, you're all Israelis, we don't need more places in Israel, unless they're like exotic places, in the Khermon or something. We have plenty of places here in Ramat Shemesh, Be'ez Hashem, the Ilam is invited to host and let people know about the Siyam. See you tomorrow, have a great week everybody. And you can now unmute if you want. You know what, let's say Kapitel Tidlum for um, Avi Kamiansky's mother-in-law. YouTube. Oh, that's right. Nah, we could, we could do a little YouTube. It's okay, they like it. Let me see. Raise a Gittel Bas Esther. יחד ישראל אל אדינו כי מדינו יחסד בארבעים מיפדוס והוא יבדז ישראל מכל אבינו יסוב. Yeah, good to walk. Yeah, who was that? Who screamed my name? Yeah. Oh, David Factor is on. Gee. <laughs>